Hello, everybody. Ngala Tungi here. So today we want to look at the different approaches to corporate governance. Different approaches to corporate governance. And without wasting time, because we have a lot to cover actually. Just as you can see. So if you are just joining us, you're highly welcome. If you've been part of this platform, you are welcome to, but we would like you to do one thing, to go and subscribe. Please go and subscribe right away. In doing so, you are encouraging us to do more. We are building a community so that other people around you too can benefit from this great work. Also, you are putting yourself in a position that whenever we release a new video, you will receive a lot and be notified. So, I encourage you to do that right away. Now, this is a live lectures. So please, as we go into the full-blown lectures, don't be distracted, please, by other activities that may be going on sometimes. Okay. So directors are part of stakeholders. And we have um, we, we have to be categorizing direct, indirect, they are direct. They are direct. Directors are members of the board and they could be subdivided into executive or non-executive. Directors. I told us the different in between names or nomenclature. So who can remind us? One one second. Okay. 
and the CEO. Yes, that is the person that oversees day to day management of the organization. So, other in internal stakeholders, which we've mentioned, like the employees. External stakeholders could mention some of them, the lenders, the regulators, governments, bankers, institutional investors. Maybe I should pause there. In Nigeria, who can we call? Who are institutional investors? In Nigeria, because what I observed from our part, you see a lot of you experiences and the like uh, practice in Nigeria to be in that news. Yes, this UK, yes. Uh, so that, that shows us that a lot of institutional investors, who are they in Nigeria? Let us use Nigeria experience now. Yes, they are part of the external stakeholders. So, who are they? In fact, they could equally be internal, depending on if they invest in us, they become internal. Madam Vivian, you want to read for us? Or you want to answer? <laughs> I want to believe we all have pension funds now. And we have pension funds. Uh -huh. And those, our pension fund, actually, we cannot collect it yet. So those funds are being invested. So into some businesses, organizations, and the like. So the PFP, pension fund administrators, actually as part of the institutional investors. Are they what? Stock exchange is part of where they put our money into to invest. So we can say they are players in stock exchange, but they do not necessarily need to invest everything in stock exchange. Okay. Corporate governance and investors confidence actually corporate governance aids investors confidence if there is no proper structure nobody wants to put his or her own money in where there is no structure because the loss of money is very high so when we have a good governance which would be fine can we remind ourselves what governance is So when we have good governance, investors' confidence is boosted. So what is good governance? We discussed it last week. I just want to be sure we're on the same page as we move on. We are only two. So if she's not answering, she must be answering. So, <laughs> we actually said that governance is about saying that organization is being run the way it should be. And running an organization is management. When we see that it's being run, that is governance. So, we can say management is under governance. And management is daily activity. Why governance is an oversight function? Please don't forget. So now we have to go to US again. According to Otto Levitt, he happened to be former chairman of stock exchange, US stock exchange. He said the following that at the time of the Aaron's collapse. You remember Aaron, one of the big organizations that collapsed in 2001. And the heavy fall of the stock exchange, which equally affected us in Nigeria, 
in 2008-2007. If a country does not have a reputation for strong corporate governance practices, capital will flow elsewhere. That is, where there is strong governance, where they know that their money will be well guided and catered for. If investors are not confident with the level of disclosure, capital will flow elsewhere. If a country opts for lax accounting and reporting standards, capital will flow elsewhere. So we see all these components form good corporate governance. So there must be good reporting in, in, in which we are key player in financial reporting as accountants. There must be processes for investors to have confidence and to put money in anything in the country or in businesses. Or enterprises in that country, regardless of how steadfast a particular company practices may be, will suffer consequences. We now see why Nigeria companies are not being well funded because of lack of corporate governance. And people are not ready to invest their money. And even banks are not ready to lend because of lack of corporate governance. Market exists by the grace of investors, and it is today's more empowered investor who will determine which company and which market will stand the test of time and endure the weight of greater competition because they must put their money inside. It says us well to remember that no market has the divine right to investors' capital. So all organizations must work their way through to boost the confidence in their operations. Agency theory. So we are at it again. So an agent is a representative of someone else or of another organization. And when an agent acts in that capacity, and let's say the agent was wrong, in law, he said something happened. Let's say I'm your agent. And I think what probably
That is, we have a duty towards our principal. And it's a duty of trust. So we see that trust is key in business life. And it's one of the things that Nigerian businesses are actually lacking. Trust. Trust. We could not trust who we want to do business with. So we just want to monitor everything so that our money will not just go down the drain. And because of this, many organizations are not well funded as they ought ordinarily to have enjoyed. So as directors, we are functioning under fiduciary duty or fiduciary responsibility. That is, we occupy a position of trust. Agency law and challenging the action of directors. The shareholders actually can challenge because they are the principal. But in the real practical sense of it, the applicability is remote in Nigeria because of our experiences. In the court of law, I read from my notes now, shareholders will have to demonstrate that the directors were actually acting against the interests of the company. Don't forget that directors are agents and they've been empowered. So for us to say that, okay, they've not acted in our best interest now, we must be able to nail it down, which is almost nearly impossible. If we are able to do that, we may be able to win the litigation. But if not, it's practically almost impossible to address that in the law court. In summary, although there is a legal relationship between the board of directors and their company or the shareholders, the shareholders cannot easily use law to control the decision and action of the directors that they've taken on their behalf, simply because authority and responsibility have been given to them. And taking, taking it back requires a lot of work. But nevertheless, the, the directors can still be voted out. But that means we must have a lot of uh, uh, special resolution. And if we cannot meet up with the special resolution required, we will not be able to put them out. So we can conclude that it's better we do not put somebody in position of directorship if we cannot trust him or her. Because once they are there, it's difficult to get them out. It's not impossible, but it's difficult to get them out. So trust is key. And it has always been key in business life. And the reason Nigeria businesses are not that functioning compared to the UK and US is trust is significant in those countries down here. People go by trust. Even without monitoring, they will do what is right. But in Nigeria, even with you monitoring, you will still find out that ah, I've lost the money. I, 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 I was even there. That is the Nigerian experience because of a lack of trust. So agency conflict, that is like the uh, vicarious liability I mentioned, which can happen. So, but if it happens, just like error and fraud, the director can do something wrong, but they do not actually meant harm. It's equally possible that they did wrong, but they actually meant harm to the business because they are following their own self-interest. So these are conflicting issues that we can have in agency theory. So we can have moral hazards. So that's like a fraud. It's like moral fraud. They know what they are doing, but they pursue their self-interest. Two. Their effort level can drop. I just want to collect my own remuneration and the like. Whether they make profit or not, I don't care. My director sitting allowance, I just want to collect. So that is one of the reasons they said, uh, Code of Conduct proposed that we should ensure that we tie 
what they make with their effort level. If not, they will drop the effort level of data or God that Yoruba used to say. That is, whether the principal make money or not, the salary is just coming. So when they take that position, any retention too, anything goes, whether we sell, whether we do not sell, I should just make my own money. The remuneration of director and the senior managers is often related to the size of the company. We will agree to that rather than its profit. This gives manager an incentive to grow the company and increase its sales turnover and assets, rather than to increase the return to the company's shareholder. So, when we want to structure organization director's uh, package, we should ensure that we tie their results to their, the money they are collecting. That is the, the impact of their activity. We should tie it to their remuneration. Because if we do not do it, do it like that, shareholders are going to be affected. So let's take a look at this example. Let's say we tie it to, to sales, volume of sales. And directors know that the, the higher the volume that we make in a year, the better for us. Because we are going to have our commission and like. So they can take a position, they ensure that, okay, they make volumes every year, but they will not mind what they expense to make that volume, which is going to affect the bottom line, the profitability. And if the organization is not profitable, it's going to affect the shareholder and the plow back. But the directors are moved on. Because it's tied to sales alone, and they ensure we are having we are we are having sales, and they are taking their commissions. But what of the profitability? So in remuneration package, we must ensure that we tie it very well. Risk aversion too; they can take an, that position of I just don't want chairman to blame me. Maybe chairman happened to be key shareholder. So, even though they know that that business is highly profitable, but they are risk averse. That is, they do not want to take much risk. They do not want to be blamed. So, they will be making, doing what they know that, okay, the chairman will not blame them. And their own salary or remuneration will come in. And it's going to affect the organization and the owners. Time horizon. Shareholders are concerned with the long-term financials, but the directors are concerned with what? More or less short term. They just want what will come in for them. And we see that everything we've been talking here now is all about ensuring that director's package is well tied to different aspects of our business. If not, if we just link it to one or the other, we'll see that that aspect will be thriving, but it will be against the total continuity of our business at long run. Agency costs. Just like when we will send a child to go and buy something and we, we give him or her money to go and buy and he or she came back has lost the money. <laughs> that is agency cost. So agency cost simply means what amount goes into having directors on the board? What amount goes in into having directors on Unlike if we do not have them, we will have safe those costs. So the cost of sitting allowance, cost of travel, cost of even when they make wrong decision. So all those costs are agency costs. And some of them are actually avoidable, while some of them are not avoidable.
I read from my notes. Agency costs do not exist when the owner and the managers are exactly the same person. Like in soap proprietorship. You run your business, you are the director, you are the shareholder. So no agency cost. Agency costs start to arise as soon as some of the shareholders are not also directors of the company. So divided interest begin to come and we have to have supervisory role in form of maybe internal audits, audit committee, directorship put in place. Agency costs are potentially very high in large companies. In fact, in Nigeria, agency cost is, is greater than even what shareholders or other employees are enjoying. Where yeah, there are many different shareholders and a large professional management. Agency costs can therefore be defined as value loss. That is, ordinarily, if it is so proprietorship, we manage our business by ourselves, we gain the loss by ourselves, no need to have director, no remuneration, no uh, sitting allowance, no uh, wrong decision being made on our own. On our behalf and the like. So all those costs are cost saving, which will be cost lost if we engage the directors as our agents. So basically, we can divide agency costs into three the cost of monitoring, the cost of them having a wrong decision. The third aspect of agency cost is incentive, that is remuneration. Monitoring them, that is why we have board of directors, so that we can monitor the performance. Then the cost of them having wrong or making wrong decision and we are vicariously liable, that is another cost. Then the last but not the least cost is we have to pay them, remunerate them so that you can continue to work better. Don't forget that directors come with experience, knowledge, exposure, insights too. So we cannot say it's, it's good enough to simply go on sole proprietorship. I just want to run my business alone. There's a limit to what individuals can achieve. So, but at the same time, when we continue to grow, we should be ready for that to be lost in engaging other people. So how can we reduce agency problem? Maybe we should quickly discuss that so that I will not just repeat all the talk. We know what agency are, we examine agency costs. So reducing the agency problem now. How can we based on your experience?
Until we discuss that, we can move on to providers of debt. Hmm. Let me ask us, who can we say are providers of debt? Providers of debt. Yes. And what type of share actually that put on Providers of Like 
in, in politics. The principal is institutionary in organization. The principals are the shareholder. Other theories of corporate governance. Transaction cost theory. Funded rationality. Opportunism. Yawakoma. Still worship. Managerial hegemony. Psychological perspective theory. We are going into them now. Governance of IT. Let me go back. We we'll pick them one by one. I'm on page 19 now. I just found through the remaining notes. I just found through. So, uh, are you using a note or you are using a fact? The new notes. Are you using new notes? Old notes. We've missed your scientific approach. I hope you are okay. So this simply is telling us that when we engage other people and they work with us, there are a lot of other costs that come into it. According to the theory of transaction cost economics, the structure of a firm or a company and the relationship between the owner of the firm and its management depends on the extent to which transactions are performed internally. So if we can do a lot of things internally, we will minimize our resources. But we need to hire from outside our resources we go up. Banded rationality. Still on page 19. Human actions are rational but only within limited understanding. So that means, like I was saying, huh? that guy, when I was saying the legal, we can't give what we do not have. The, the law side of it, I think it was. So we could not give, they will hire the director. We cannot give, they cannot give us what they do not have. It's to the extent of their capacity, they will be able to deliver to us. Opportunism, that is self-interest. So that is, when we engage the, the best of directors, we still be human beings. And as human beings, self-interest will come in. That is, we must defend ourselves first. God forbid, but if anything should happen in this room now, everybody first of all want to get out before we remember that now. I left a friend there. It's just, it's just natural. So when we engage other people, we should know that that, that, that will happen. And that's why we need to build corporate code of governance around it to minimize all those things. Like Vivian said, we cannot actually eradicate it. We can only manage them. Still worship. The director must be accountable. Still watch. It's a position of trust, and we must be accountable for what resources have been given to us to manage. Resource dependency theory. Everything 
functions based on to what extent we have resources to utilize. Resources, resource dependence theory look at how the resources of an organization affect its governance and behavior. So, uh, big organizations have bigger income, at the same time bigger expense and cost too. While organizations with less budget we equally have minimal revenue, minimal return, minimal expenses. So everything is based and dependent on the resources that is made available to us as an organization. Managerial hegemony or the theory of class. So this is simply telling us that directors, they are more or less like tools, or even we elite, like tools in the hand of the superior class, people that have resources in this world to use, so maybe we can use the political world to oppress those that are yet to have. Class hegemony theory is a massive based theory that considered the business elites. Don't forget when we say business elite in Nigeria, we have don't think that maybe somebody outside. We in this class, we are business elites. As a group of individuals who control the governance of companies to perpetuate their power base. That is, we are helping those that our organization or building businesses to continue to have more. And in them continuing to have more, if they do not have good and sound corporate governance, they will continue to do whatsoever and achieve whatsoever they want to achieve at the expense of the society, people, governance, and the like. Psychological and organizational perspective theory. A number of behavioral and psychological theory of corporate governance have also been developed. A psychological theory approach takes a view that governance depends largely on informal structure and behavior within the organization. Like when we were treating uh, under ethics, organ the organization web, organizational web. I want to remember that topic, but around organizational web. So it's organization that will be, yes, cultural web, yes, cultural web. The psychology of organization actually, it, it has some layers, the inner, the outer layer, and the like. So the psychology, the way we do things in this organization, it may not even be written down on our HR policy, but we know that in this place is how we function, that is psychology and it exists in business. Systems theory, when we say system, it means combination or interrelationship of a lot of different units to form a singular component. Like this fan that is running is a system on its own. We could see a fan, but if we dismantle it, we will see, of course, we could see blade now, we could see hanker, we could see rods, we could see a plastic that beautify it, and internally there are rotors, and internally we have grease. All those ones, we could not see, but this is the fan system. So when we are talking about system theory, we are talking about different components of organization that make an organization to function as a singular unit. And as accountant, we should be systems, Builder. We should be building systems. We are being trained to be system or system builders. Governance and IT. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we have this in our. Uh, 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 but we we'll just quickly given. Uh, governance and IT. Like COVID. People that are offering audit to that is the uh, topic COVID in our fact, which I believe that is, it has never been examined, and I don't think it's going to be, because it's, it's a certification program on its own. And it's 
borders on governance and how to set up IT governance in an organization. So, if we look at governance and IT now, we will see it's a system, actually. This is a system we are looking at. We see the finance, operations, marketing, and sales. I want to believe we know that marketing and, and sales, they are different units. Marketing and sales, they are actually different. Why marketing is about promotions? That is getting people to know that we exist. Sales is about actually adding our products or services to their hands. That is the buying aspect. Sales is the buying aspect. Marketing is the awareness aspect. Do we understand? So then we have administration. Human resources management. Then the infotech itself. Risk system and internal control. That the internal auditor and the like. Strategy. And that is at the corporate level. Compliance and the like. So this is an organizational system that we are looking at under IT governance. And all these aspects and many more of organization must be governed. That is, we put code of ethics in place and processes to ensure that they conform. Financial reporting, which relates directly with us, is a department to policy and procedures. That work can fall under administration. Then we must delegate. IT governance now. The responsibility of the board, and I think many of our board members may not actually be aware of this, that just as we are governing financial and the like, we must know what is going on in our IT department. We must know what application we should use in our department. And now we can monitor that application. With respect to information technology, the director's duty includes ensuring that adequate information technology and information system are in place, first of all. Two, adequate funding is available to support it. Don't forget, when we buy an application, we must support it, because majority of them come to expiry dates. The expire we must like the software. I think when, when we started, we were talking about my antivirus. It expires and we need to buy and maintain it. So governance must cover that aspect too. Funding. An IT or IS strategy must be in place. We must know when our organization must continue to buy another application. Like when we are talking of SAGE, as popular as SAGE is, it, it, it has its, uh, how will I put it? An organization can outgrow one SAGE and move to another. We must be able to know when are we going to outgrow this particular stage of our IT infrastructure and when should we move on. A robust system of internal control is in place to prevent and detect errors and the like even in an IT environment. Mm. Cyber risk, personal data protection, control over IT generally. Personal data protection. Do we know that ordinarily? I don't know. You we don't know this, please, you know. If you are given uh, a complaint laptop. They are given a complaint laptop. Even though they will not say you should not use it for personal use, it's advised that you should not. Even when they are not monitoring it, nobody is taking it away from you. But it's advised that you don't. Because it can be monitored. Even when you've deleted everything from your hard drive, our drive will always retain and they can always look anything that has gone to uh, any system unless you did not type it. Unless you did not type it. So it's advised we use organizations 
system strictly for that business. Even if we are given funds, you use it for what? Yes, any, anything you do, whether you save or you do, you watch YouTube, you your, uh, all those uh, uh, sites that you, you like. Uh, uh, you know that it could be, unless you do not do that on that system, it can be retrieved. Even when you clean it up, it can be retrieved. The only thing that will not make it to be retrieved until that hard drive is smashed into pieces. Likewise, phones too. In fact, that one is worse. The phone is worse. Are we observe something that when uh, the president and the like, when they, they really want to have some tough discussions, they do it working. Let's, let us show. And they will not carry their gadgets. Because when you switch off your phone, even when you switch off your phone, you're still recording everything that is going on in that environment. Do we know that? You are not recording, you are not using recorder. You switch it off. You switch your phone off. Your phone is still working. It's recording everything. But there are sophisticated, sorry, there are sophisticated applications to retrieve all those things. But what I'm pointing out is they are recoverable, even though you did not even put them there. The people are talking about this one that if you put it there, phone is worst. Your private discussions and the like that you switch on the phone, they can retrieve it. That a phone is somewhere around. That's why if crime is committed, unless the police and the like, they are not ready to work, they can easily identify that. They can easily identify. Even in the search life, yes, because it, it functions based on some fundamental IT basis. So we are in the IT world as good as these gadgets are. We like us, we are here like now, there are some fundamental things that we should know so that we will not fall victim later on. But it's possible at later on, maybe you now have misunderstanding which will happen at any time with that your IT manager and like. And the power that they can wage against you is, is almost without limits. And you will not just even have the slightest pain. But you are you are completely exposed as far as they are concerned. Completely. If they have all those applications, they can retrieve anything from you. Even those things that you think that they are maybe best secret steps, or they are not even secret, you did not even keep them. Unless we do not have system around us, whether switched up or on, those things have a way of monitoring and recording our environment. So, class, be mindful. Maybe by the way, but it's important that we know this as educated people. So, IT control, just like financial controls to IT governance should cover controls, that is, how IT administrator to monitor who logged in, who logged out, who used this application, when was it used, for what purposes was it, was it used for, and like, those are controls. Who have access to what? So with this, we come to the end of what we started last week. And if you look, this is 10. But we should be able to finish the new topic today. Which is to corporate governance. And anybody that is offering audits will be at disadvantage on this particular topic. Because the same approach, especially for AAA, advanced audits, we are going to use now. So basically, two approaches.
to decide whether to invest in the shares or to sell it out. Investors need to be protected against unethical or dishonest behavior, which management can do or the directors of the organization. So different, organ different countries have different code of conduct and different approaches. And for Nigeria, for Nigeria, because the way our part addressed it is like school-oriented companies. And I also we are companies, principle-oriented nation. We are principle-oriented nation. So our code is based on principles, not on rules. Countries have developed corporate governance codes and practices because they want to attract and keep investment capital. And which type of investment are we talking about here? FDI, foreign direct investment. This is because investment capital helps the country's economy to develop and is complained to prosper. Pressure for better corporate governance has come mainly from two sides or reasons. One, the collapse of the world's top market, especially that of US, from 2001, another happened in 2008. One nearly happened like three years ago. Two, pressure comes from institutional investors. And when we started this morning, we touch on who institutional investors are. And we give an example of our PFAs, our pension fund administrators. They are a good example of institutional investors in our local HMO. HMO, no. That's the health management uh, organization. Their own is to uh, pull little, little resources together because when somebody is sick, somebody else is strong. And they make money from it. It's just like insurance. We insure for accidents. But we know that all Nigerians will not have accidents. So they take money from people, large number of people that will not have accidents. So they cater for little accidents that we cause and they make their own margin. So they are, they are, they are not uh, investors. If they invest, they are into private inf investment. But PFAs, dear, yes, it's commonwealth investment because your pension, my pension, till as we continue to work, before we can obtain it, are we there? And those monies, they are using it and making money, paying their staff, and giving us little, little returns. So they are institutional investors. There are some organizations too that they are strictly for investments. They are not PFAs, but they are institutional investors. I want to remember one uh, notable international company that all they do is to fund organizations or to buy business to them. Yes, yes. They are institutional investors. The International Court of Corporate Net uh, International Corporate Governance Network (ICGN). So that is one body that oversees corporate governance. And see, all these bodies are actually voluntary organizations. It's an entity formed in 1995, whose members consist of major institutional investors complaints, bankers, and other interest groups. And please, I think in the area now, we need to pay attention for the purpose of our exams. It's different a body of knowledge now, corporate governance organization, and their functions. You see that for ICGN, the major on their membership is complaints, banks, and investment organization. We are going to come across another one, which is going to be strictly business owners and the like. We should note the function in which different agencies or body of corporate governance regulators 
are made up of their membership. But it's not the same. And their strengths too are not the same. So like ICGN that we are talking about now, they are basically for institutional investors, companies, bankers. Because the governance of a corporation is one of the key factors that investors consider when they decide where to allocate their own fund. So these people approach governance from Don't forget that we have a lot of stakeholders that corporate governance must take care of. So these people now, they are... Okay. What I say with the notes now is this. We have like three bodies. ICGN is one. We are going to come to other. What I'm saying is ICGN. Yes, yes. So ICGN now, what I'm saying is this. You know corporate governance is proud. But they have common interests defending investors. So now what I'm saying is for this one now, their membership is shifting for bankers, invest, uh, corporate investors. We are going to come to another one that is going to be other stakeholders. That's what I'm pointing our attention to. But their reason of existence is still the same to protect funds and investors. ICGN members considering making investment decision also consider the market's governance program. That is, how is a market environment in an in a country? How does it operate? Ethics and complaint performance. Of course, we will agree that an organization hardly will be able to grow above its ethics. Do we agree? Because our ethics is fundamental to our operations and who we are going to attract as investors, as even customers. Some people, because of our ethics, will not be our customer and will not invest into us. Let's say, for example, uh, Emir, like Emir of Canada, we know that they are custodian of Islamic faith. They will not, for any reason, have investment in views. Do we understand? They will not. Why? Because, they buy as, as yes, no, they can buy shares, but because of their leadership as to that faith, against our policy. You understand? They will, know, they will not want. So, our ethics form is a basic for our performance. That's where I'm going. There are some customers who will not have by the reason of our ethics. And there are some that we will attract by reason of our ethics. Like an Islamic cleric may not be your director in, in a banking industry that is that is lending loan with interest because it's part of four Islamic states. That's why we have an Islamic uh, banking with that is loan without interest that Islam advocates. So if you have such an organization. And that kind of ethics, definitely there are some segments of the nation or the business world that you will attract. And some you will not attract by the reason of what you stand for. Corporate governance code and different model of corporate ownership. When we are talking about Corporate governance, especially in the broader language, we cannot eliminate the term stock exchange. Yes. Because that is where the investors congregate. It's the market where we buy and sell shares.
shares? How many of us are shareholders? How many of us have shares? How many of us have shares? Can you take it to street? One, two. How many of us buy yam? Yam, yam. Y A M. Especially the ladies. I'm just joking. What I'm saying is we we bought we we are we buy commodities, but we could not buy those ones that are artificial. We do not have shares. <laughs> so we should try as much as possible as I can time to buy shares. Yes, they may not. They may not. There are reasons, so many reasons to buy shares. Yes, but trading them is a bit difficult because few Nigerian, uh, what's it called, actually have platform for that. Do you, have, do you know of one that have, has international platform for that? Yes, international platform. You can buy in your house, you can buy as you are talking now, yes. you can sell. Maybe you will, maybe you will connect with Maybe you will connect me with that platform. But let us try as much as possible to buy shoes, especially, especially we that are working or in employment. What it does is, is futuristic. That if, if you are looking at it now, especially if you if you are buying it for children or children education, but you must ensure one thing that the organization will not collapse. Uh, uh, one they have good long term prospects. Not minding whether they are profitable now or not. And you buy it for the future. There's no issues. There's no issues. But you will buy it for the future, but the company is dead. And we've experienced it in Nigeria. Okay. So that is. Corporate governance, we cannot eliminate stock exchange when we are talking about corporate governance in, in the marketplace. Laws and regulations on, I'm reading from my notes, on corporate governance issues are also mainly applied to stock market companies. So there's no how we really want to deal with corporate governance without talking about multinationals and the like. Like when we started with one of the reasons we can minimize corporate governance issue is to go solo, right? So proprietorship and the like. So when we are talking about corporate corporate governance, we cannot eliminate talking about multinationals and stock market. It's almost impossible. Other companies can normally decide what system of corporate governance they want, and they are not required to comply. But for stock exchange, compliance is key. If not, they will be delisted. Even in Nigeria, they delist if organization is not compliant. So, rule-based approach now. A rule-based approach to corporate governance is based on the view that companies must be required by law. Law is don't must be required by law to comply with established principles of good corporate governance. The rules might apply only to some types of company or companies, such as major stock market companies. However, for the companies to which they apply, that is the rule. The rules must be obeyed and without exception or few exceptions if there is going to be any. So rules are so straight jacketed and 
must be complied with. There is no give me a reason why you are not complying. It's either you are complying or you will be delisted. So rules have their their backup on laws. Advantages of rules. Companies do not have choice. No choice. It's either do or don't. And there is repercussion for do's and repercussion consequences for don't. All companies are required to meet same minimum standard, and that is another issue. And just as we know, the composition of organizations vary from one organization to the other. But now giving them and putting them under the same rule is almost impossible because different conditions, they, they are experiencing different conditions. So if they are to adhere to the same rule, it's almost unreasonable. Investors' confidence in the stock market might be improved if the stock market companies are required to comply with recognized corporate governance rule. So that is an advantage. Disadvantage, the same rules might not be suitable. Okay, I've, I've said that there are some aspects of corporate governance that cannot be regulated easily, such as negotiating director's remuneration. We cannot, we cannot put rules for that because your director will be different from my director and they have different understanding, different exposure, different perspectives, coming from different backgrounds. So how are you going to tell a director? You must hand this. You must there are some aspects of corporate governance that cannot be regulated easily, such as director's remuneration, deciding the most suitable range of skill that they must have, assessing the performance of the board and its directors. It's, it's, it's difficult to achieve. So you now see I'm coming home by adopting our path and putting our Nigerian experience. Page three, corporate governance rules, practical application, example of statutory rules in the UK and Nigeria are as follows. We will see that with some exceptions, mainly for small organizations or medium-sized organizations, companies are required to submit a director's report. And even in Nigeria, we have it too. And if there are salaries still range, when we are auditing, we must work on it and, and submit it. It's part of what we want to see and highlighted in the financials. And it's part of good corporate governance because then we can easily look at it and compare it to what the organization actually makes, the profit. Let's say the total package of all the directors, 500 million in a year, and the organization made uh, 500 million, the organization made, let's say, 1 billion. But if the organization made 10 million as profit, but meanwhile, the total package of directors alone, not other staff, is 5% of that. So we could imagine what will happen. So it's help, when we highlight, highlight it based on corporate governance ethics, it helps to compare and understand and interpret the financials better. The financial statement should be audited. It's part of good corporate governance, even in Nigeria must be audited. But in Nigerian case now is Kama let us know that the PLCs have statutory audits. While other organizations, the small and medium scale, have private audits. That is they can decide whether they want to audit or not. Quoted complaints must prepare a director's remuneration report. Okay, yes. In Nigeria is applicable. The UK Company Act, just like Nigerian Kama, I want to believe we know that Kama now has moved from Kama 
1999 to come at 2020. So that was why I put it there. Even come at 2020 specifies duty of directors or their duty they put to the organization. Just like the UK Act. Now we are traveling to US. Basically, what draws the whole world's attention to corporate governance is begins around 2000, 2001, when Aaron and what come fell, when they collapsed, and they collapsed strictly because of corporate governance. That is, directors follow their self interest as against corporate interest, making the shareholders to have consequence. Why? enjoy their own remuneration package and other goodies. A company is a company in serious financial difficulty was dominated by ship executives. Like when I asked us who and who are the most powerful among the board and I think she told us the chairman and the CEO. So companies are dominated by strong powerful Chief executive and a small number of senior executives, and those senior members they are just the ESP. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are not, they are, but what we did was wrong or not, so they just follow to so do wrong. Financial reporting was misleading, so we auditors and practitioner accountants we have hand in it because we enhance it, we endorse it, we sign it off, and we express free and fair opinion. And that was the end of auto arm dancing because auto arm dancing actually audited errors. Financial controls were weak and inadequate to prevent the misleading reporting and to prevent fraudulent activity by some executives. Like I always say, we have two types of fraud that we have. We have fraudulent financial reporting and misappropriation. These are the two frauds. Fraudulent financial reporting to happen. Organization management must have hands in them. But misappropriation can happen at any level. Anybody can misappropriate. Misappropriation simply means we use what uh, was meant for another purpose for what was not intended. And it will happen. I usually cite that example. When we use that stapler, that staple pin, just one out of that thousand. To staple our CV is misappropriation, it's fraud. Well, it's so simple, but it's fraud. I, I, just, explained, I just explained, the staple pin was meant for the official use, right? But you just want to clip that two pages uh, CV. So you use that one pin. The whole pin is maybe one piece. It has like 1,000 pins in it. You just but that one actually is misappropriated. So on the general level, misappropriation can take place. But for financial reporting, well, fraudulent financial reporting will take place. Practitioners must have um, uh, directors, managers must have hand in it because there are a lot of controls before financials will be produced. Somebody needs to approve something and things like that, and we know that it's erroneous or it will not even exist. 